Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston and welcome to lecture 26 of Introductory Linear Algebra. Today we're going to learn about subspaces and the idea behind subspaces is there's a lot of shapes that we've seen come up over and over and over in this course and they're going to keep on coming up over and over and over again and we'd like to come up with some way of actually sort of formally talking about them. Okay, and these shapes that we've seen, they're lines, right? We've seen lots of lines in this course and planes. We've seen lots of planes in this course. For example, we talked a little bit about how, you know, we had the linear system and its solution set happened to be a plane in four-dimensional space, okay? And what we'd like to do is we'd like to give sort of a common footing that lets us talk about lines and planes and higher dimensional things that behave like lines and planes or look like lines and planes, right? So the idea here is lines and planes, they're infinitely long, but they're also flat. Okay, so we want to sort of capture that notion and be able to talk about like lines being one dimensional and planes being two dimensional, but then also like three and four and five and higher dimensional long, infinitely long and flat things as well. And what those are, well, those are subspaces. Okay, so, so let's get to it. Okay, what is a subspace? Well, it's any set of vectors. Okay, so a, subset, a subspace, it's a set of vectors in Rn that has two properties. Okay, so the first property is that if you take any two vectors in that set and add them up, then it's still in that set. So if V and W are in the set, then V plus W has also got to be in the set. Okay, and then the second property is that if V is in the set and C is any scalar, in other words, it's any real number, then C times V has to be in that set. Okay, so in other words, what a subspace is, is it's a set of vectors that sort of respects our two basic operations on vectors. It respects vector addition and it respects scalar multiplication. It, we, formally, we say that the set is closed under those two operations. It's closed under vector addition and, sc and scalar multiplication. Okay, equivalently, these two properties together, if you take properties A and B and mash them together, you find that that set, for it to be a subspace, it's got to be closed under linear combinations. Okay, so if you have any collection of vectors and any scalars, then the linear combination that you get from smashing those things together, that had better still be in the set. If it's not in the set, then you know that's not a subspace. Okay, it's not sort of infinitely long it's, or it's not flat. Okay, it doesn't have one of those properties that we want it to have. All right, so let's go through a couple examples of sets that are and are not subspaces. Okay, so first example here is the set of all vectors in R2 that have the property that the second entry is the square of the first entry. Is that set there, is that a subspace? Okay, and hopefully, like I've been sort of trying to hammer home this idea that they're infinitely long and flat, subspaces, they're flat, but, I mean, this set here, it's going to look like a parabola, right? y equals x squared. You know what that graph looks like. It looks like a parabola. Okay, so hopefully your intuition should be telling you, no, that's not a subspace. Okay, it's not flat. So one of these two defining properties up here, either property A or property B, it's going to fail. Okay, so, so let's check those properties. All right, if it were a subspace, both of those properties would hold. Let's start off. Let's just try to check property A. Okay, and because I think this is probably not a subspace because it, you know, it doesn't feel flat to me, I'm going to try to find a counterexample. I'm going to try to find, I'm going to try to show that property A fails. Okay, so the way I do that is I pick two vectors that are in the set. So here I've just picked them sort of randomly. I picked the vector 2, 4. Okay, and this is in the set because the second coordinate 4 is the square of the first one, right? It satisfies this property that y equals x squared. And then I picked another vector in the set, 3, 9. And again, that's in the set because the second entry is the square of the first one. Okay, but now what do I have to check? Well, let's scroll back up to the definition. Here, great, I've got v and w are in the set. Is v plus w in the set? If it were a subspace, that would be true. v plus w would also be in the set. But let's see what happens here. v plus w, if I add up these two vectors that are in the set, then what I get is the vector 5, 13. Okay, and then the question is, is 5, 13, is that vector in the set S? In other words, is the second entry the square of the first entry? And no, it's not, right? 5 squared is 25. It's not equal to 13. So this vector here, it's not in the set S. So what we've done is we found two vectors in S, but their sum is not in S. Therefore, we've shown that this is not a subspace. Okay, it's a, it's a fine and dandy set of vectors, but it's not a subspace, okay? It's not, it doesn't have these extra properties that make it sort of a very nice uh, set of vectors. Okay, so this is very analogous back to when we looked at linear transformations, okay? There's sort of all functions, you know, functions that just send vectors around, 
Okay, but then there's the nice linear algebra functions, linear transformations, that sort of respect vector addition and scalar multiplication. Same thing here, there are all sets, and like this is a fine example of a set, but it's sort of not a nice linear algebra example of a set. It doesn't respect vector addition or scalar multiplication. Okay, so it's just not gonna be the type of thing that comes up in linear algebra. All right, let's do another example. It's the set of vectors in R3 this time, so vectors with three entries, satisfying these two equations, is that a subspace? So the vectors where the first entry is three times the second entry, and the last entry is minus two times the second entry. Is that a subspace? Okay, so our setup is the same. We've got to determine whether or not those two defining properties A and B hold. Okay, and the way that I'm gonna get at this is I'm gonna write out these vectors a bit more explicitly. Like I said, X has to be three Y. Okay, and Z has to be minus two Y. Okay, and what I can do is I can notice that, hey, there's a Y in each one of those entries, just factor it out. Okay, so I can factor that Y out in front. It's just Y times the vector three, one, minus two, three, one, minus two. Okay, so this set S here contains all vectors of this form. And now I wanna know, hey, is that set there? Is that a subspace? Does it have those two properties A and B? Does it respect vector addition and scalar multiplication? Okay. And well, okay, let's just check those two properties. Start off with property A, okay? So pick two vectors that are in the set, okay? So I mean two vectors in the set, pick them arbitrarily. So y1 times three, one minus two, and y2 times three, one minus two, and add them up. And then ask the question, is that still in the set after I add them up? Well, if I add them up, what do I get? Well, I just get y1, three, one minus two, plus y2, three, one minus two. And then the point is I can factor out the y1 plus y2 out in front. Right? They're both multiplying the same vector, 3, 1, minus 2, so I can factor that out on the right. And what I'm left with is y1 plus y2 times 3, 1, minus 2. And the point is, this is just some number times 3, 1, minus 2. So that's in the set, right? Because w what were the vectors in S? Well, if it's of the form any number times 3, 1, minus 2, then it's in there. And yeah, here's, here's that number, okay? This is y up above. This, because I've got some number here, yeah, it's in S. I don't care what that number is. The point is just I was able to write it as number times three, one minus two. All right, property B, show that, hey, it's closed under scalar multiplication now. Okay, so again, just pick some vector in the set and pick some scalar. And I wanna show that if I construct C times V, that's still in the set S. So it's still of the form scalar times three, one minus two. Okay, so just do the multiplication, right? C times V is just C times Y times three, one minus two which is still in S, right? Because here, this is the scalar, C times Y, that's the scalar out in front, it's some scalar times three, one minus two, so yeah, it's still in S. All right, so yes, this set S here is a subspace. The set of all vectors satisfying these two equations up here, that's a subspace, all right? And hopefully this matches sort of the geometric intuition I talked about earlier, right? The, 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 the set of all vectors of this form, well, it's all scalar multiples of a particular vector, so it's just a line pointing in a particular direction, okay? And I talked about how, like, the point of subspaces is they sort of generalize lines and planes and yada, yada, yada to arbitrary dimensions. Well, here's a one-dimensional subspace. It's a line. All right, let's do one more example, okay? Is the set of vectors satisfying these two equations? Is this a subspace of R3, okay? So the only difference from the previous example is I've got an extra plus one here. In the previous example, it was x equals three y, now it's x equals three y plus one, all right? But let's try to mimic what we did up above and see what happens, okay? So this time, when I sort of try to factor and simplify things a little bit, I'm gonna find that, okay, x, y, z equals this junk here. I just subbed in my value for x, and I subbed in my value for y, y equals minus two, or sorry, my value for z, z is minus two y, okay? And now factor as much as I can, okay? And I have to be a little bit careful in the first entry because there's not a y everywhere here. So when I factor out y, I get y times three, one minus two, right? Because I'm just picking off the coefficients of y here. Okay, but then I have a little bit more left over. I have a plus one left over in the first entry, okay? So that's why I'm adding on this piece over here. Okay, if this equation here looks confusing to you, maybe think about backwards. Imagine starting with this uh, vector over on the right and sort of bring it all together and you'll see that, yeah, you get this vector on the left. All right, so the set S consists of vectors of this form. I need to show that properties A and B hold if it's a subspace. Or if I want, if I want to show that it's not a subspace, I need to show that at least one of A or B fails. All right. Well, I'm gonna show that property B fails actually, okay? I'm gonna show that this is not a subspace. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna notice that, hey, 
this vector 1, 0, 0, that's in S, right? Okay. Um, in particular, I mean, if I choose y equals 0, then this term goes away, and I'm left just with 1, 0, 0. So 1, 0, 0 is in S. Okay, but there are scalar multiples of that that are not in S. In particular, 0 times that vector, okay, 0 times 1, 0, 0, which is just the 0 vector, that's not in S, okay? And how do we see that? Well, we would have to make this expression equal to 0. Okay, well, the only way that I can get the second and third entries equal to 0 is if I choose y equals 0, right? Because, I mean, the second and third entries are just y and minus 2y. The only way those can equal 0 is if y equals 0. But if y equals 0, then the first entry is not 0. Okay, so there's no way to make all three entries 0 at the same time. No value of y does that. Okay, so the 0 vector is not in S. Okay, so some scalar multiple of 1, 0, 0 is not in S, so it's not closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, and the reason that I've started here is actually this is a very useful trick in general. Okay, if you're trying to show that something is not a subspace, check if it contains the zero vector. If it doesn't contain the zero vector, it's not going to be a subspace for a very similar reason to what we did here. Okay, you could take any vector that is in that subspace, or sorry, in that set, and multiply it by zero to get the zero vector. And if that's not in there, then oh, not close to underscalar multiplication. Okay, so if something's a subspace, zero vector always has to be in there. If it's not, then our conclusion is, boom, it's not a subspace. Okay, so this one, I want to talk a little bit about the geometry of this one. This set here, again, it looks like a line. Okay, so I lied to you a little bit with the geometric interpretation before, okay? This is a line, but it's not a line through the origin, okay? And that's the problem. Okay, subspaces, yes, they generalize lines and planes and yada, 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 but they have to go through the origin as well, okay? So that's our intuition for line, for subspaces, okay? Lines and planes and infinitely long, flat things that go through the origin. All right, so I don't know, let's just draw a little picture here and do a little summary. So in two-dimensional space, I mean, sort of the interesting subspaces are lines, okay? So lines through the origin, though, okay? And the reason that lines through the origin are subspaces is, well, I mean, if you take any two things on that line and you add them up, they're still going to be pointing along that line, okay? And, I mean, similarly with scalar multiplication, if I multiply anything on that line by a scalar multiple, it's still on that line, okay? So it satisfies those two properties, A and B, okay? And, I mean, th this is almost all that can happen in R2. These are almost the only subspaces in R2, okay? But technically, there are a couple others, okay? Also, the set containing just the zero vector, so only the guy at the origin there, turns out that's a subspace as well, because, I mean, if you add the zero vector to the zero vector, eh, it's still the zero vector, still in there. If you scale or multiply the zero vector by something, eh, it's still the zero vector, still in there. So that set here, this one also satisfies those two closure properties, so it's also a subspace. And there's one other one as well, also sort of trivial, all of R2 itself. R2 is a subspace of R2, okay? Again, you just go back and check those two defining properties. If I add two things in R2, is it still in R2? Yeah. If I scale or multiply something that's in R2, is it still in R2? Yeah, okay? But then that's finally it, okay? These are the only possibilities. In R2, if you have a subspace, it must be the zero vector or a line through the origin or all of R2. Those are the only possibilities. Okay. In R3, something slightly more interesting happens, but not too much more interesting. Okay, The extra thing that you get in R3 is, well, your subspace, it might be a plane through the origin. Okay, And the, the way that you can see that this is a subspace, planes through the origins are subspaces, well, scalar multiplication is not too hard to see, because if you just take some vector and multiply by a scalar, points in the same direction, it's still on the same plane. Okay. And the way that you can see vector addition, it's closed under vector addition, is via the parallelogram rule. If you take v and w, two vectors that are on the plane, and you add them up, remember what you get is the vector pointing to the far corner of that parallelogram, okay, which is still on the same plane. Okay, so it's closed under scalar multiplication, it's clo closed under vector addition. So yeah, planes to the origin are subspaces as well, and that's it. Okay, in R3, in other words, like you have these three possibilities that we had in R2, plus one more possibility plane. So in R3, the possibilities are just the zero vector, or a line through the origin, or a plane through the origin, or the entire set. So R3 in this case, all of R3. All right, and then that's it, though. Those are the only possibilities for subspaces of R3. Okay, and then in higher dimensions, 
basically the same thing happens, okay? Like the way to think about this is in three dimensions, what were the possibilities of subspaces? Well, sort of a zero dimensional space or like a copy of the real line just sort of rotated around maybe, or all of R2. And then in R3, there was like a zero dimensional space or one dimensional space or two dimensional space or all of R3. Same thing happens in higher dimensions, subspaces. What a subspace is, is it's sort of like a distorted copy of a lower dimensional RM some embedded somewhere in RN. Okay, so it's infinitely long and flat also has to go through the origin. All right, anyway, that's enough about subspaces. Uh, we'll start, start talking about some particularly important examples of subspaces next class, so I will see you then.